guys, Derek here. Okay, so here's going to be my final uh, video of the belt printer. I might do a few other videos of prints and time lapses, but here we go. So there is this here is a designed. I, I just designed it quickly to keep the uh, base to the frame that just stops it sliding around I'm using one of the A uh, one of the um, Z mounts that hold it going up and down I've just put pop it there and that will obviously hold it to the frame as well coming round to this side I've got my octo print going inside Uh, also make sure that these are nice and tight, they're all the belts are nice and tight, same as this one here. Make sure they're all nice and tight by undoing these screws, pulling it to one side and uh, that will then tighten the belt up. Uh, these be careful with when you're tightening up and to the uh, rod because they can uh, fray themselves, they, they can uh, over tighten themselves and then you loosen it um, which means you're, you're trying to turn it, tighten it and it just doesn't do anything so just be careful with those when you're putting them onto the print coming around to this side and underneath I've got a couple of brackets that I've just designed quickly just L brackets and that holds the print on the back side as well There's a, a couple of prints here, the dragon, the dragon does look really nice, uh, it's a little bit, I need to tune it slightly better, but they are absolutely perfect. XYZ calibration cubes, they all came out fine. And also I tested last night on just a quick live stream to see if I can print small things so I printed one frog and then I asked the octo print and the plugin for it is continue print to print four which it did I had this is the bracket that you will get with the printer with the uh, kit um, and this is how the extruder and everything will look when you put it all together. Now I kept on having issues with the uh, inconsistency of it kept on slipping uh, on the filament uh, here, kept on slipping, it, then it kept on under extruding and all that. I tried recalibrating, just nothing, it just carried on mucking around. So I reached out to my friends over at Honey Badger and yeah, James and Mike and they kindly sent me over a H2 extruder which I have now got on there which I've had to redesign a bracket that I asked Andre, the uh, manager, uh, the head honcho of uh, the company who creates these kits. He helped me design uh, a bracket so I can hook it up. I had to do a few redesigns of the bracket just to get it a lot more firmer so it would fit better. Here is the other mount that is obviously down there as well so this is one side that's the other side I'm just using it for a webcam mounting thing. I'm also reusing the channels to cover the channels to cover the cable that goes obviously down round and then into the actual machine so I've done a few extra modifications and now I will uh, reset the camera so I can then give you my final thoughts okay my final thoughts it works what else can I say it works um, you need to make sure of certain parts of this 
is perfectly done. Make sure that is a perfect 90 degree and make sure the corners are 45. Otherwise you might find that the extruder is ripping the part off the bed halfway through a print which means obviously the angle is not correct. If you then re-slice the part to 44 degrees you will find it will more likely print fine and it will just work but if you want to get it at 45 degrees what you need to do is these blue um, brackets at the back you need to loosen them and then make sure that you get to this 45 degree angle as soon as you get the 45 degree angle retighten the screws back up and you're up and running I've done an impromptu uh, live stream yesterday just to see if anyone wanted to quickly jump on and have a quick look and also ask any questions. I've done it out of blue so hardly anyone showed up which is fine. Um, if you want to ask any questions please leave comment, uh, please ask the questions down below in the comments and I will get back to you. I will also have all the links to the Facebook groups that I'm with that deals with this kit and if you need any help or advice you can go there as well uh, when the kit arrived it arrived perfectly packaged there was nothing wrong with it uh, I've done an unboxing video of the kit itself and that came out fine uh, putting it together to get to this point now that I'm comfortable where I can print stuff and it just prints it's taken me over four months to get to this point. Um, it's been a bit of a long road. Uh, I've had several issues with the extruder. Um, obviously trying to redo the mount, redo everything for the main extruder. But I had to give up. Um, I was also getting problems with... Um, I was also getting problems with... Um, temp errors where it would um, thermal run away uh, what I found is the X ribbon cable was uh, being pulled out slightly by the idler for the X gantry so what you need to do I will just go here one second I'll quickly show you so on here all I've done is just bent the cable to a 90 degree and then it doesn't wrap around here which was obviously loosening it and giving you a thermal runaway with, and then it will stop the print. Sorry if you're getting motion sickness, one second, I'm just putting you back. Okay, so there the errors I was issue, issues I was mostly getting, and finally sorted out. It I can now slice, dump it, dump the file onto uh, OctoPrint, and it will just print. And that's what you want from a printer. You don't want to be mucking around or anything. It, like I said, I've gone through a four-month road to hell with this, but at the very end. I saw the I saw a bright light and it was like you can carry on you can carry on um, so I did and I finally got it working and I am so happy that I was I was pushed into getting this done um, I have a few other projects coming up which obviously I'm, I need a tool like this in my arsenal that I can actually carry on printing the stuff I need I do a lot of swords, I do a lot of axes, I do, um, and ov obviously I need this Infinite Z. I want, I'm going to also print a full size, life size model of Paul the Alien from the video, uh, from the film. Uh, I want to do one of those and obviously have it outside my man cave with glowing eyes, scared of wife. Anyway, um, the eccentric nuts on the Y, make sure they are in place and make sure that they are tight. And if you think that you've got them in the right place, 
give them one final tight as well, tightening, because the uh, locking nuts sometimes, for me, I had a couple which was slipping, so you had to replace them, and I've even double locked, double nutted one of them, one side, to make sure it just doesn't move. Um, I'm getting great prints. I can slice, send it, print, and it would, and it works. Uh, a couple of other big projects I've got coming up is reprinting the Thanos blade. Uh, that's about two meters in length, and I also want to. I'm going to be doing it double sided. So obviously the first side will come out, and then print out the other side, and then glue them together in the middle. Um, that also gives me the opportunity of putting a steel rod or a metal rod right through the whole thing to give it extra strength and that will actually help as well. Final thoughts, it works. That's it, it, it works. Um, and that's what you want from a printer. Um, I did get clobbered with customs charges. Um, which was in the region of 60 to 70 pounds, um, which I obviously paid. Um, there was no way around it. Uh, you might not get them charges. I did. So add that into the factor. But you get a, a good 285 to 300 on the X. I'm guessing 285 to 300 on the Y. I haven't done anything that tall yet. And obviously you get the infinite Z. Uh, benefits of doing it on this printer, if you've got a spare X1 or you just want to give it a go as a good project. Benefits, you've got touch screen. Um, you don't have to do anything with the firmware. Uh, it's already been uh, done, built. All you do is just flash it to the board and it works. The... Um, the advantages of having this one is obviously the touchscreen and the bigger build volume over the Ender 3. Yes, the Ender 3 you could pick one up for £100 or so or $99. Um, and all you need to do is get the Ender 3 kit, put it together and then you've got a belt printer by all means. A lot of, a lot of people have done that because the Ender 3s are fairly cheap. This what uh, is about three to four hundred pound anyway without the kit uh, with the kit the kit is in the region of about the same sort of costing so it's going up to really nearly about 700 pounds but it's the same price of a cr30 but this is bigger build volume and you built it and you can change it and you can do anything else you want and it's not licensed to creality or whatever I'm more likely going to get slated for that in the comments, but it's up to you. Um, it works. If you want to ask me any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please like it. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Put in the comments why you didn't like it. Um, if you want to sub to the videos and see any, uh, more videos coming out about this, some more time lapses of the prints that I've been doing, um, and follow me as much as you can. I'll put uh, my uh, social media links down below as well. I normally post on uh, Twitter as well. So I'll put that down below and mostly on Facebook. So I'll put the uh, groups on Facebook as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you wait, if you hear, still here at the end of it, then thank you so much. Um, it works. Be yourselves. See you later. Bye.